the InfoScope land management system allows you to effectively automate and address areas such as tenement compliance, stakeholder engagement, ground disturbance, environmental obligations, native title, cultural heritage and land access. Talk to us today about a comprehensive solution catered to your operations. Thank you to IMARC for the opportunity to speak at this year's inaugural online program. It's obviously disappointing not to be able to speak to you in person, but I'm pleased that this virtual format allows many more of us to come together from all over the world and safely. This is in fact the third time that I've spoken at the IMARC conference in my current job, and what a very different year this has been for us all. In the context of the issues our industry has faced over the past 18 months, I look forward today to sharing the actions that ICMM members have taken to respond to the very fast moving expectations of our industry around sustainability and transparency. I want to cover ICMM's role in developing the global industry standard on tailings management, the actions that our members have taken through their responses to COVID-19 and the recently strengthened commitments to sustainability and transparency as set out in ICMM's mining principles. The metals and minerals produced by our members are the bedrock of modern society. Not only do they help drive growth and modernization in developing countries, but they'll also support the decarbonization process that is critical in addressing the key global challenge of our time. Numerous analysts are predicting that demand for metals, including cobalt, copper and zinc, will surge as nations and consumers turn to cleaner forms of energy. The mining industry can have a very positive impact on the mineral rich countries that will supply this demand by catalyzing social and economic development. However, we're often asked, at what cost? The industry is rightly facing increased scrutiny driven by events, including the tragic collapse of the Brumadinho tailings facility in Brazil, the destruction of Jukan Gorge in Australia, and continued instances of fatalities. In the last decade, we've also seen demands for greater transparency, disclosure, and accountability. ESG, environmental social governance, has been pushed further up the political and business agenda. This was a key driver behind the latest evolution of our membership commitments, our mining principles. They seek to articulate what good practice looks like on a site-by-site -site basis. And as they are membership commitments, they apply to more than 650 of our members' assets in over 50 countries. Our 10 mining principles are underpinned by 38 performance expectations, which cover areas including human rights, mining closure, resettlement, security, diversity, free prior and informed consent, and respect for indigenous peoples. Implementation is supported by robust site level validation, credible assurance and transparent disclosure. However, social expectations continue to evolve at pace and that pace continues to accelerate. An example of what I mean by this is the COVID-19 pandemic. The crisis has shown a spotlight, shone a spotlight on the many inequalities and vulnerabilities apparent throughout society. The industry recognised this and came together quickly with workers, communities, governments and other stakeholders to help tackle this common global enemy. It showed the deep and unique connection that the mining industry has with communities, which is often overlooked. Our companies provide a number of services from access to healthcare, to more practical support, including the provision of food parcels, PPE, private, uh, personal protective equipment and clean water. We also worked with our members in order to provide a platform to share insights and responses. Some of our members have extensive experience with infectious diseases such as Ebola, and that knowledge and other learnings were shared quickly and effectively. We have demonstrated adaptability, resilience, purpose and compassion, but must be prepared to make this commonplace as countries across the globe face the threat of second waves and further economic uncertainty for years to come. Despite the strong community support demonstrated through our members' COVID-19 responses, events such as Jukan Gorge show clearly that there's still much more to do in managing the social aspect of ESG. It's clear to me that we must learn from this tragic event, talk openly about what happened and work together to help strengthen management approaches to successful community engagement. A more effective integration of social performance into business decision-making is needed in a way that links the external context, context more efficiently to company strategy. And it will be ICMM's role to help support that. 
Very clearly what our industry knows better than any other is the critical importance of collaboration to tackle some of the greatest challenges facing our industry. The very existence of ICMM is testament to that. Most recently, our response to the Brimadinho tragedy speaks to the value and importance of transparency and collaboration. In the afternoon, in the after, sorry, in the aftermath of Brimadinho, questions were rightly raised about the mining industry's ability to manage tailings facilities safely and transparently. In a first of its kind response, ICMM, the United Nations Environment Programme UNEP, and the Principles for Responsible Investment, PRI, co-convened the Global Tailings Review to establish an international standard for the safer management of tailings storage facilities. While this multi-stakeholder approach was not always straightforward, I believe that it has made the final product, the global industry standard on tailings management, far more impactful. And UNEP's and PRI's involvement and support will catalyze a much faster take up beyond ICMM's members who have already committed to implement it. A collaboration of a different sort, but unique in its own right, is ICMM's Innovation for Cleaner, Safer Vehicles, ICSV, that brings together our 27 members, as well as 19 mobile equipment suppliers, to work together in a non-competitive space for the accelerated development of a new generation of mining vehicles that will address health, safety, and climate change issues from the mine site. I spoke about this earlier in the week alongside Mike Henry from BHP, Nick Holland from Goldfields, and Caterpillar's Denise Johnson, who are central to the success of the initiative and the progress that we have made so far. If you have a moment, do check that conversation out on demand. And finally, another focus for ICMM is the commitment to pursue continual improvement in social performance and to contribute to the social, economic, and institutional development of host countries and communities. Part of this revolves around our Skills for Our Common Future initiative. The initiative responds to the urgent need to better equip mining communities to prosper and thrive through the shocks and disruptions of our rapidly changing world. This ranges from the effect of climate change, economic transitions, including the move to automation and artificial intelligence, to natural disasters and pandemics. It's a long-term aspirational goal in which we aim to collaborate with global partners to help examine ways to accelerate national and regional efforts to build new and bolster existing skills that are necessary to drive inclusive economic participation and diversification beyond mining. This will be particularly important in de developing countries and we hope will fundamentally enhance mining's contribution to local mining communities. As I get close to my allotted 10 minutes, I'd like to ask you to reflect on our industry's role in meeting the material demands of modern society, of decarbonisation and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This can only be done by listening to each other and by working together. I've been working in the industry for over 20 years and I've seen huge progress over that period in how we articulate our purpose and tell our story. However, stakeholders will only listen if the industry's performance meets the expectations of society and if its performance is transparently disclosed. That's why the tailing standard and our mining principles emphasize transparency and disclosure. This will be critical if we are to attract the young talent the industry will need in the future. In addition, although there's been a consistent focus on the E in ESG, events such as Juk and Gorge have in my mind shown that focus on the S cannot be sidelined as has sometimes been the case in the past. This requires different skills and is often much harder to get right. Without a strong and constantly attentive focus on the S, broad community support can be hard to maintain, let alone achieve. Here too, transparency and disclosure, as well as performance and accountability must underpin the industry's approach, both to this and to the other challenges that the industry will face in the future. I firmly believe that by working together, we can rise to these challenges, to overcome them, and to enhance the industry's contribution in a responsible and sustainable way. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.